life is starting to get back to normal. Checkpoints coming down. Buses disinfected, gearing up for the return to rush hour. This QR code, your golden ticket, tracing and tracking hundreds of millions of people. Fearing a second wave, China now banning most international travelers from entering the country. At the original epicenter of the novel coronavirus in Wuhan, China, there is now a countdown to freedom for those living under lockdown, with Hubei province relaxing restrictions starting Wednesday and its capital, Wuhan, set to relax its rules on April 8th. You can consider it phased freedoms for the many residents caught in one of the hardest hit areas of this outbreak. Chinese state media shows images of Wuhan preparing for that moment. Intercity traffic checkpoints coming down. Buses disinfected, gearing up for the return to rush hour. Sanitation crews working to clean mass transit centers like the Wuhan railway station. And medical teams like this Shanghai-based crew packing up to head home, leaving the front lines. I think it's really amazing, finally. I've been at home for two months. PhD student Della Efefania video chatted with us from her cramped dormitory. It's been two months under Wuhan city lockdown. Her life, like an increasing number of us, requiring a creative balance. But if you try to see it in the positive way that you get to rest, you get to try to cook, maybe you can learn how to cook more or you can exercise at home. She's been doing all of that, working out indoors, lots of cooking, plenty of eating. I can't stop eating. Watching movies and keeping connected with her family back in Indonesia. While excited to see signs of progress, she's also hesitant about stepping back out into the city. I'm anxious because uh, the lockdown is working, right? So there, there is no more people getting infected. But when they open, then what happened? When we first touched base with Bo Hanlon a few weeks ago, both his wife and mother were undergoing treatment for the virus. And Bo was critical of the local government's handling of the crisis. But now... And so too are his wife and mother. He says both have since fully recovered. These residents have been living under some of the most extreme lockdown measures, and they now offer some advice to others around the world entering self-isolation. Maybe it's, it's God saying like, okay, I cleared up everything. Your schedule, your classes, your work, you cannot do anything, you stay inside. So maybe you can talk to, to God. She and others left with a lot of time for talking and listening. You may wonder, what is it like as, as companies and restaurants and life is starting to get back to normal, or at least a new normal, if you will. We're here at the W in Shanghai. They've actually just resumed their brunch service, which may sound trivial, but this is a, a taste of things coming back online. They're expecting here more than 100 people coming together. So you're talking about mass gatherings once again, people in close quarters. How is it that they're able to do that and do it in a safe manner so as to prevent any potential exposure of the virus? It all comes down to what's on your phone, the QR code. The way they designate that is based on your potential exposure to those with the virus. Green, your golden ticket to get into certain places, be it restaurants, hotels, shopping centers. If it's yellow or if it's red, it means you've been flagged for some reason. And yellow would suggest that they'd have you do some home isolation, some self-isolation. Red could mean forced government quarantine. Here's the process, we'll check in. Checking in for brunch. My QR code. My QR code, okay, so health code. And this is what will generate whether or not I'm clear to come in. All right, green. For example, if you're on a flight or you're on a train or you're in a space and somebody a few seats away turns out to have been a confirmed case, they're able to track who was around that individual, and if you were one of those people nearby, you would then be flagged and then potentially be asked to quarantine and to keep yourself removed from the rest of society as they continue to investigate and monitor whether or not that's really an exposure risk. It's their way of getting back to business, of resuming life, and at the same time tracing and tracking 
individuals as they move about to different parts of China. I mean, this is happening now with hundreds of millions of people. It's now April 1st, and the country has issued new restrictions, fearing a second wave. Fearing a second wave of novel coronavirus cases, China now banning most international travelers from entering the country. The Chinese say that they were compelled to enact such extreme measures given a rise in imported cases of this virus. China taking no chances when it comes to people entering the country. Elaine Chow, an American living in Shanghai, chronicled her journey back into mainland China from Japan. When I first landed, seeing all of those people in hazmat suits like, come up to you and you know hold a like temperature gun to your head was uh, quite like unsettling. But at the same time, you're like, okay, they definitely take this whole not getting infected thing pretty seriously. It is a time-consuming process as passengers go through a health screening, a detailed interview about their travel history, and finally customs. Three and a half hours later, and Chow boarded a bus to her district's testing center, the nasal and throat swab done under these tents. About eight hours after that, she got the all clear, negative for the coronavirus, and then began her 14-day at-home quarantine. Kim Wong is also mid-quarantine after flying in from New Jersey to Shanghai. She takes her temperature twice a day and sends it to a community doctor by WeChat. Outside her door, a sensor to make sure she does not break quarantine. Going through the U.S. and Japan, like I thought by far this was the most organized and streamlined process that I've seen. A few weeks ago, other countries were fearing and in some cases banning travelers from China. Now it is China, wary of who's arriving and what they might be carrying with them. Sure, they feel a little bit relieved to know that things may be coming to an end, but they know it's far from getting back to normal. Girls are just as good as boys in anything. We know how to hit. We know how to run. And we can definitely play football. So when I heard boys chanting, beat that girl, beat that girl, 